Hi and welcome to your next lecture in computer science for everyone. This time we're going to talk about what we talked in the last presentation, but instead of arrays, we're going to iterate through an array list. So, in order to iterate through an array list, we need to use a class called the iterator. And the iterator is going to help us iterate through an array list. So this is the class that lets us iterate, and it's called the iterator class. And in order to iterate, we first need to, of course, populate the array list. In order to populate an array list, we simply, as we know, add things to the array list, like so. So we're going to have a phrases um, array list of strings that's going to contain those four strings. In order to iterate through the array list, we need to create an iterator object. But instead of doing iterator itr equals new iterator, we need to create this iterator from the array list because this iterator is going to refer to the array list. Therefore, we create an iterator by doing iterator itr equals and then the array list we're going to iterate through full stop iterator and then um, brackets. So this creates an iterator for this array list. And this is why we don't do it as iterator itr equals new iterator, because then it wouldn't know which array, li array list it is referring to. So it is created as phrases.iterator. And this creates an iterator inside the array list and gives it back to us, returning the iterator to us. Then while itr dot has next, has next is a method that returns a Boolean value. And it tells us whether there is another element after the element the iterator is currently pointing to. So when we create the iterator, we're pointing at element 0. And well, actually, we're pointing at element minus 1, which is the one before 0. So we're going to check, do we have an element 0? This, If this returns true, it means we have a next element. So then we create the next we create a string that's going to contain the next element, which in our case would be element 0. This is something that we haven't yet seen, which is casting, which is uh, putting the class name of something between brackets in front of another value. So in here, itr.next doesn't return a string to us. It doesn't. It returns kind of like the mother of all classes in Java, which is the object class. So it returns an object, object, and then by putting the string class in front of it in brackets, we temporarily are going to treat that object, which is just everything, into a string. So the iterator iterates through objects, because this way it can iterate through everything because everything is an object. So we get the next item as an object, which is a class in Java, and then we treat it as a string, and then we have a string here, and then we put this inside our variable str, which is a type string. So now we essentially have a string, which is str. It's really interesting because we cannot cast into something that our array list doesn't contain. For example, both integer and string are objects, but strings are not integers, and integers are not strings. However, they are both objects. So if the iterator is going through objects, we can convert that object into a string or an integer or anything else. However, if we're storing strings in our array list, and we're iterating through objects, we can convert those objects to strings, but not to integers or anything else. That is because object contains string, kind of string comes from object, it extends the functionality of the object. So here we convert the next object into string, and then we store it in our variable called str. And finally, we print this string out, and we close the while loop. Okay, so hopefully this wasn't too complicated. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to try to create some array lists and iterate through them. So it should be very interesting. And 
then I will explain in more detail what I mean with string comes from object, whereas integer doesn't come from string and things like that. So let's go into the next video. We'll do some array lists, and then in the following presentation, we will explain a bit more about um, object-oriented programming and what this means. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.